problem k, which was snails. So the general idea of this problem is that we have a set of measurements, a sequence of measurements along the spiral part of our shells, and that will be used to determine whether or not it is a nautilus or a snail. If it follows this pattern, then the shell is for a nautilus. If it doesn't, then it's a snail. And the pattern is a recursive pattern. And all a recursive pattern is, is a pattern that is defined in terms of itself. So we can see here that past four, the next values of this pattern are defined in terms of previous values of the pattern. So that's what makes this recursive. So m of five will just be the sum of all four previous values, which will be six. And then m of six would be 12 because it would be the sum of m of 2, m of 3, m of 4, and m of 5, which is 6 plus then another 6. So that's the general idea of this problem. And we have a very large number of measurements, which is going to be fun to deal with. Let's look at the input and output. We're going to have n as our first line. That's going to be the number of lines that follow. And we notice that this is 2 to the 15. That's an awful lot of lines. So immediately, it sounds like we're going to have to do this fairly efficiently, because 2 to the 15 is not insignificant. Then we're going to have n lines where we have a sequence of k measurements. So that's also going to be 2 to the 15. So we might have 2 to the 15 lines with 2 to the 15 measurements. So now we really have a lot of measurements that we're going to have to deal with. So we have to be really careful about the complexity of our algorithm. So the input format is just that we have measurements separated by spaces, and they're going to be in the range of 0 to 2 to the 32. Now, 2 to the 32 is the size of an unsigned integer, which means that we have to be careful about integer overflow, basically meaning that if you try and store a number that's larger than an integer can hold, then it will potentially loop back around and give you a number that is like a very low number. I'm going to be using Python, which has variable length integers, so I don't have to deal with that. But if you're using something like Java or C++, I recommend just using a long. It doesn't affect performance that much, and you won't have to ever worry about it on problems like this. Occasionally, you will need to implement something even longer than a long, but for this problem, that's going to be unnecessary. So the output is going to be a single line for each one of these measurements that's going to be nautilus or snail. So we just have to determine whether or not it matches or doesn't match our sequence. All right, so I mentioned that we have to be efficient with our identification and our measurement comparisons. There's a few ways of doing this, um, but all of them require you to not implement this as just the pure recursive formulation. So for example, if you just wrote a function called m, which took in k, and then it spit out the answer and it called itself recursively in these cases, it will be too slow. Um, that won't work. We're going to have to be a little bit smarter with it. There are a few ways of being smarter with it. I'm going to show how to use something called memoization. And that's not me saying memorization wrong. This is a different technique called memoization. And the basic idea of memoization is that you are able to write your function recursively, but we have an extra little step where if we've already run this function on that input, then we return the result that we already had. I think the easiest way to show this is just by diving into the code. And we'll start by just implementing the recursive formulation. So we'll make a function called m, which will just take in n. And I'm going to modify this a little bit. Um, instead of taking in one indexed, I'm going to use zero indexed just to make it a little bit easier because we're going to have to eventually compare it against uh, an array of numbers and it'll just be easier to have this zero indexed. 
Now let's handle the base cases. So if n is less than 4, so if it's 0, 1, 2, or 3, then we're just going to return the value that was passed in because m of 0 is going to be 0, m of 1 is going to be 1, m of 2 is going to be 2, m of 3 is going to be 3. So if this is the case, then what we're going to do is return n. Now in the other cases, what we're going to do is return the sum of the previous four values. And we're just going to call it as if we were implementing this like a recursive function. So now we've implemented it recursively. We'll do the memoization later after we've made sure that this is actually working. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to loop through our input. So we have n lines of input and we're going to loop through them, and then we're going to read in the measurements for each line. And we're using this Python list comprehension which splits the input and then converts everything to an integer and puts it into a list. Now we have to loop through our measurements and see if they match up with our sequence. And I'm going to write another function to do this instead of using this for loop, um, and you'll see why in just a second. So we'll call this function identify, and we'll take in measurements. And we're going to do our loop in here. However, we're going to use the enumerate function in Python for our for loop. So what this will do is it will give you the index as well as the actual value. So we'll get i and our value, and we can access both of them inside of our for loop. In other languages, you might have to do something where you loop over just i and then get value by indexing into measurements. But in Python, you can do both at the same time. Now let's go back over to the problem real quick. And we see that if it does not follow the pattern, then it's a snail shell. So if at any point in this for loop, our value does not correspond to the measurement, the m value, the sequence value of the same i, then we know that we automatically have a snail. We don't have to continue looking. So if at any point in this for loop we don't match our sequence, it's automatically a snail. Outside of the for loop, we're just going to return Nautilus and be careful to spell it correctly. And this return statement will only ever be hit if all of our measurements match the sequence. Now, the reason that I extracted this to another function was so that I could turn inside of my for loop and it would just return out of the function and stop going through any further. This is a method of short circuiting which is extremely useful because we don't have to look at all the rest of the measurements once we found one that doesn't match. So now let's call our identify function and print its result. Let's test this on the sample inputs and then we'll look at how to memoize our m function. So we'll take this input, paste it in, and we get nautilus snail snail nautilus, which is our correct answer, nautilus, snail, snail, nautilus. That means that it seems like we're doing the algorithm correctly. Let's now make sure that it's efficient enough. And the way that we're going to do this is by modifying our m function to be memoized. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to store values of previous computations in a dictionary. And we'll just call it mmemoized. And at the top of our function, we're going to look and see if n is already in our m memoized dictionary. And this dot get function will return none, which is falsy, if it doesn't exist in the dictionary yet. But if it does exist, then we'll get a number back and we'll just return it. So this is almost all that we need, but we need to actually put stuff into m memoized when we get values. So we'll change these return statements to instead store the value into a variable. 
and then we'll store this variable into our m memoized dictionary for the n that was passed in. And we have to make sure that we also return that result. So this is the general technique for any function that you want to memoize. You have to create a dictionary or some other data structure to store your computations in. Then you have to look in that dictionary and see if your value has already been added. And if it is, then you just return it immediately. And then if you have to do the computation after you've done it, you store the result back into your data structure before returning the result. Let's verify that we are still getting the correct answer on the sample input. And we are. Let's see if it works. Cool, it was accepted. There are a lot of other ways of making this efficient. Memoization is just one of the most simple to explain and easiest to implement, which is why I used it for this explanation.